Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our web webinar on Love Data Management, which we've organized as part of Love Data Week. In this webinar, we'll talk to you about our expert tool guide on data management that was developed by the CESDA Working Group on Training during the course of 2017. As speakers, we have Ellen Lenaerts from Dans in Holland, Ulf Jacobsen from SND in Sweden, Gunn Inger Liese from SD in Norway, part of the team who helped develop this module. As part of this webinar, which will last about 35, 40 minutes and will be followed by a session of question and answers for you, We'll first give you a brief introduction on what is CESDA, and in particular the CESDA ERIC and the CESDA Training Working Group. Ellen will then introduce you to the tour guides, the project, and the future plans we have. Ulf will give you a taste of one of the chapters, in particular data management planning, and how the module can help you with that. And finally, Gunn will give you an overview of the entire content of the tour guide, and how you can use it for self-study and for training. CESDA is a consortium of European Social Science Data Archives, which has been in existence for many decades. It has, in the course of last year, become a European Research Infrastructure Consortium, so now called the CESDA ERIC. It is a network of social science data archives throughout Europe and provides large scale integrated and sustainable data services to the social sciences. The main aim is to provide infrastructure, data services, data archives, to encourage high quality research in the social sciences, in particular with the focus on sharing data, making data available for reuse to the research communities. And there's also a focus on teaching and learning in the social sciences. Within CESDA, there are three important pillars, technology, trust, and training. We are the group that looks at training, both training for researchers and training of trainers, train the trainer sessions staff within the various service providers. In 2016, we started a training working group across all the CESDA archives in the various countries. And up until now, we've had a focus within that group on data discovery, in particular looking at finding and accessing data across Europe, and on research data management, where we train researchers in good data practices to make data findable, understandable, sustainably accessible, and reusable. And it is within this remit that the module that we're presenting here, the Expert Tour Guide, has been developed. I now hand over to Ellen to explain to us what the project did in 2017. Yeah, thank you, Fiela. Uh, good morning to you all. And uh, it's quite surprising to see that there are a lot of uh, uh, trainers here that are not uh, linked to the social sciences. Um, although the expert tool guide uh, was designed specifically for this domain. So uh, I hope this is still of interest to you. And uh, now try to um, move one slide, but it doesn't seem to, ah, yeah. So why assess that online module on RDM? Um, there are actually three reasons. And as it happened, the working group training found out that many CESDA partners already organized workshops on research data management for researchers and other partners would like to know more about these workshops. So what content to use, um, what exercises to use. So the training group decided to share the training practices a little bit more. Then uh, research, researchers also approached the SESTA partners more and more with questions around data management plans that are uh, required by uh, funders, local funders, but also by uh, the European um, uh, Rise in 2020 project. And of course, there are already quite some research data management guidances available, and uh, I think many of you might know them. And 
Uh, this was also the case two years ago, but we still thought that the domain and Europe European specific guide would really be useful for the researchers and the RDM trainers to use. Now, while we'll be working on the module, uh, the results of an open air and fair data expert group uh, survey on the Horizon 2020 template for data, data management plans showed that a more domain specific guidance is actually needed and requested for by researchers, but also by data supporters. So we thought we are right on track with the CESA online module here. Now for the online model, we decided, um, uh, it, well, well uh, during the year that it would not be a course, but more like a guide so that researchers could also use it for self-study. Um, when you um, go to the to the, the SESTA uh, ERIC website and you, you enter the module, you will be able to access everything that is available. At the same time, uh, this guide is also, as part of the SESTA ERIC website, also local workshops can use it uh, for blended learning, so they can um, um, refer to the online guide before the workshop starts or using the online guide while the workshop uh, is uh, organized. The timeline of this one-year project, to just quickly go through it and, and just to mention that it was actually a one-year project and not much more. So we had uh, really a lot to do during this year. And first, we, uh, we already kicked off before the year, so in December. And then um, to assemble all kinds uh, of ideas uh, of the overall structure, what would be the theme of the guide, what sources did we already have, what would be our story. Uh, this is already, uh, well, when you brainstorm, it all seems that it, it, uh, it seems logical, it seems that you're going somewhere, but in gen from January to, January to April, it appears that we have developed a lot of content ideas and there was a, a still uh, confusion about the chapters, about would we uh, create a course or a guide and so on. So in May, 2017, we had a workshop, all the, the partners that were involved in the project were there and we um, uh, tried to finalize the, the target audience and also the chapters outline. Now, after that, because, um, well, face to face workshop for that purpose is really good. Um, we had some hard work on the content, and when the content, uh, when there was a draft implementation online, uh, we had a feedback period for researchers, data management specialists, and trainers. And at the end, of course, when the feedback was received, uh, we could improve our content, create a starter package for trainers, and launch the website. So that's in quick, but I will. Yeah, just, just to, to mention it, in, in the May workshop, we created a project statement, and uh, this was very important because we, we, we finalized target audience. We said we would address the early uh, career social sciences uh, researchers, and we would not be like, like mantra or essentials for data support because we targeted researchers, but also because we would wanted to have a European perspective in the online module. Now, the content of the chapters is following uh, the research data life cycle. So if you look at the titles of the chapters, that will, Boon will go um, in more detail on the content of the chapters later on. But um, the structure that we decided upon was this. Uh, we had several authors per chapter. They are in the online version. They are mentioned also, so you know uh, who wrote the, the specific chapters. And we had a pool of uh, people providing feedback and testing uh, the online module in October. Now, there are some elements that uh, reoccur in several chapters. Now, to, to start with the last one, Adapt Your DMP, that's the one that occurs in every chapter. So that is really the central theme throughout because we realized that there was a lot of uh, requests around data management planning and of course, uh, also go into that in a minute. Then we had expert tips in several chapters. The European diversity, so what is the specific situation in a specific country? 
and um, the perspective of looking at uh, research data management for a qualitative or a quantitative data perspective. So to give some examples from the online module, expert tips, for example, on how fair are your data or um, how to handle uh, content. These are just uh, some examples. And for European diversity, <coughs> this is uh, also an example. You see data management requirements in Europe. So we have uh, already um, the situation described for quite a lot of uh, countries. And of course, we are looking for more, but also in the chapter on legal issues, of course, um, we point at differences between the countries. Then some examples on the quantitative and qualitative data perspective. And these are always shown with their specific images so that you know when going through the module what is uh, more from a quantitative data perspective and what is more from a qualitative data perspective. Now the user feedback that we received in October, and we received from 30 people in total. These are mainly uh, uh, employees from the uh, partners, so the social science data archives, but also um, researchers that uh, that they asked to to have a, a closer look at the module. Now we had some very good feedback, but also lots and lots of feedback of what we could change to uh, to improve the module, and we have been working on that in uh, at the last part of the year. Now, while we were uh, creating those, we also uh, we, we were improving the model. We also created two outlines for possible workshops. One uh, a one day workshop on the introduction to research data management for social science researchers, and one day uh, one day content specific on ethical and legal consideration in uh, research data management. So these outlines use the online module, refer to the online module, and have um, additional exercises if they were available. So what we want to do in the future is to add more exercises to for trainers to uh, use and um, uh, also to, um, sorry, I was, there was something popping up in my screen. Um, so more exercises, we will add a slide sets per, per chapter for the trainers to use. Um, with images that are also in the online module, so it, it can really link to the online model in a, in a nicer way. Um, and um, of course, there will be an eva eva evaluation form and so on. So if you are interested in such a starter package for trainers, then please contact us. Then in December, we had the launch of the uh, expert tool guide. You can see us all smiling of the hard work. And then, uh, of course, we had some plans for this year. And what uh, you will notice later on that the discovery chapter is still missing and this will be added at the end of this year. Um, and we will uh, improve the start package as was also mentioned in the previous slide. And we uh, will of course improve the content further on. That means uh, corrections of the English, uh, improve the content based on the feedback that we already had, but we didn't have the time to implement. And there will be several events, a train-the-trainer event uh, in April. This is for the SESTA uh, trainers. Uh, but if you're interested, let us know, uh, because we might have other opportunities where you can go. And of course, there will be local workshops by the uh, SESTA data archives and um, using the module during this year. And based on their um, experiences, the, uh, it, it, the online model will also be improved, of course. Now I would like to hand over to Ulf, um, who will say more about data management planning. So yes, hello. Good morning, everyone. Ulf here. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about the benefits of having a data management plan and what data management is. Uh, first of all, I think it's important to understand the to understand the benefits of data management. You have to understand the concept of data management, what it implies, and it is about how to handle, organize, 
structure and store research data throughout the research project. It also takes into account technical, organizational, structural, legislative and uh, sustainability aspects. And thinking about this will help the researcher to keep the data collected and or used within the project very tidy, unusable uh, and safe while at the same time ensuring the longevity of the data. There is also a clear structure, if you have that in the data, it's going to be easier to manage the data throughout the project, uh, which will make it easier to handle the data that are collected uh, during the project, but also avoid time-consuming work afterwards. It also might involve some additional work, of course. I mean, you have to write the data management plan, but that extra time will pay off in the end and later on in the project as well. So in order to simplify the work on data management, we think that a data management plan can be and should be created early in the research process. So the question is then, what is a data management plan? It is a formal document that will uh, provide a framework uh, for how to handle the data and the material during the, and after the project. The content of the data management plan is designed in accordance uh, with a specific research project. So depending on what you are looking into, you will change the contents of the data management plan. And I would suggest uh, that, and it's also my experience after talking to several researchers, that looking into uh, the checklist or kind of checklist early in the process will prevent later problems and you can also uh, sort out problems in forehand. A couple of added values for this, it's, I mean, it's, um, <clears throat> First of all, uh, looking through a data management plan checklist makes you aware of possible problems, as I said before, so you can work around them. It also keeps all your questions surrounding managing the data in one place. If you have it in one document, everyone can turn to that document and look into it. And it's readily available for others rather than just vaguely remembered and uh, I mean, everyone knows it's simple to forget things. It also helps you calculating how much money that will be required for managing the research data during the project. And uh, that's something people tend to forget to think about. A data management plan also allows you to think through beforehand how to provide a data set to a data repository which is as fair as possible, fair principles. I'm not going into those now. Another benefit, another, uh, another value of this is that as a researcher, you're actually showing your institution, the funders, your partners, that you take data management seriously, if you have a data management plan and that you're willing to show that you're dealing with research funds and research participants in a very responsible way. So why should you write a data management plan? Having control over how the data it is managed during the research process, it becomes easier for others to understand the material. It also enables further research after the project has ended. Data should be openly available so that the research uh, results can be verified. And also it prevents unnecessary data collection. If someone else can use, reuse your data, they don't have to collect the same information one more time. So how do you do then? I'd suggest that you could start with a DMP checklist. We have one here in, at the CEST Expert Tour. Each chapter has to adapt a DMP section and each section has corresponding questions to that chapter. And in the 
first chapter, there's a reference list, a PDF document that you can download with all these questions collected in one place. And I think that's a very good start to look into this, read through it, and work from there. And that's for me. And now I hand over to, hopefully, to Gun. Yes, I'm waiting for... Um... Thank you, I've control. Okay. Um, oh. Okay, we are here. <laughs> so, thank you, Ulf, and good morning, everyone. So, Ulf just outlined uh, chapter one of the online module, explaining the benefits of good data management. But how do you actually manage your data in a responsible way? Um, the remaining chapters of the online module basically provides best practices, tips and tricks to help you to get started in managing your data. Um, the content can be used both for self-study and for training. And in the following, we'll just have a very quick look at the content of each chapter so you know what to expect there. Uh, in the chapter on, on organizing and documenting, Mm, this chapter basically deals with ways to make it easy for yourself and to others uh, to retrieve relevant files uh, and information efficiently later on. Three main topics are covered. Uh, the first one pertains to structuring your files um, and organizing variables. Because in a research project, different data files typically have different internal structures. And often the data files have specific relations to each other. So a careful structuring of your data will make it easier for you to navigate in your total data material. Among other things, this chapter covers how to actually design qualitative or quantitative data files. Second, uh, this chapter has useful advice on conventions to name files in a logical way. Um, and as well as advice on how to organize files into folders that will make sense for you also like in three years from now. Um, and the third topic uh, of this chapter has to do with documentation and metadata. Because the basic message is you have to make sure to document what you do when you do it. This way you'll avoid having to try to remember towards the end of your project what you did, why you did it, and what those cryptic file abbreviations actually mean. Good routines for documentation will save you a lot of time in the long run. Especially for still unexperienced researchers, though, it's not so easy to foresee what documentation you should actually give priority to. Therefore, this chapter provides um, practical checklists for relevant things to document, separating, among other things, between project-level documentation as you can see now in that example screenshot, and data level documentation. Next, the process chapter uh, covers how to prepare your data files for analysis and data sharing. This is important because throughout the different phases of your project, your data files will typically be edited numerous times. And during that process, it's crucial um, to make sure that nothing is lost unintentionally. So in this chapter, um, you basically uh, learn how to provide strategies to minimize errors during the processes of data entry and data coding. Um, and as you can see on the screenshot on the lower right, uh, all the lists that you find can easily be expanded to provide more detailed information. The chapter on storing data deals with how to protect your data against accidental loss and against unauthorized manipulation. To this end, there are three keywords to consider with regard to data management planning. Storage, backup, and security. When collecting sensitive personal data, this is of course particularly important. As an example of storage information in this chapter, you'll find a systematic overview of different storage solutions along with some pros and cons for each solution. This will help you to determine which solutions are relevant and adequate for your needs. This chapter will also familiarize you with common backup strategies. 
this is important in the case that should should it happen that you lose data accidentally for instance through a human error or because your laptop was stolen or if there is a hardware failure regarding security you should be able to decide when and how to protect your data against unauthorized access for instance using strong passwords and encryption and you can easily navigate and click on whichever of these to topics that you need the protect part of the tour guide gives you important information, advice and practical help to deal with legal and ethical considerations that you will need in order to create shareable data. First of all, it clarifies the different legal requirements of member states and the impact of the upcoming general data protection regulation. Furthermore, people often think that it's impossible to share personal data. However, this chapter provides concrete information and examples on how to share personal data. As everywhere else in this online guide, all such examples may be particularly useful when using this tour guide for training. For example, this chapter explains with examples how to obtain informed consent, as you can see on that screenshot. Uh, also, you will find um, advice and concrete examples of how to anonymize your data. Finally, an often overlooked question concerns copyright and ownership. Oh, sorry. Um, concerns um, copyright and ownership. I mean, who actually owns your research data? The answer to that question will have practical bearings on what you are allowed to do with them. And therefore, clearing ownership and copyright issues is an essential part of data management planning. The chapter on publishing covers important issues that you need to consider to make sure that research data are easily citable, visible, findable and accessible under proper conditions. Among other things, you'll need to make a conscious choice on which data to actually publish. Second, um, the chapter provides um, an overview and useful tips on how to select a data repository that will fit your needs, uh, considering both your needs right now and also in the future. Third, licensing your data um, is extremely important to make your data actually reusable. Regulating data access is a powerful tool to share even data that cannot be shared openly. And I'd like to mention in that context that SESTA archives strive to make research data accessible as openly as possible, while at the same time protecting from inappropriate access. Um, and also this chapter covers ways to promote your research data publication. Finally, as Ellen already mentioned, uh, there will be a final chapter on data discovery, which will appear later on in 2018.